everyone. Um, we're just going to do a video here on using Google Scholar very quickly and easily to get high-end research and to build a quick body of research for your assignment, okay? Um, apologies for the banging. Uh, we're renovating, so there's lots of hammering going on. And apologies for my voice, because I'm recovering from a cold and stuff, quite a frog in my throat, so... Okay, I'm making this video because a lot of my students are saying to me that they don't know how to use Google Scholar and that teachers are still telling them to go to the library for research. Um, well, how does that work out? You go to the library, you then have to search for the book, make sure the book is actually in the library. You sometimes you have to wait because somebody else has the book out. You can only have the book for a certain amount of days. You can get ebooks out of the library, but uh, sometimes that's a whole other procedure, and then the book has to disappear after some days. And look, um, then if you get like a physical book, you then have to cross-reference the book. How? By getting another physical book. Um, you can't zoom in. You can't highlight and annotate because the library really frowns on you writing on their books. That. Um, this entire business of going to, it's a nonsense. It's a very old hat way of doing things and I'm not sure why anybody's even suggesting that to you. A book is fine for a very specific thing if it's written by an expert and it's a very specific thing or it's the actual textbook you're learning from but even then, get the ebook. So this is so you can actually get your things done quickly as opposed to just wasting time for absolutely no reason. So all we want to do here, I, oh, couple of things before we get started. One, I'm using my Android tablet, which is also a phone, so uh, nobody should call me through this. I've got don't disturb, but if it happens, that's what happened there. Um, second of all, I'm using my device because I'm trying to show you that it can be done quickly and easily on the go, on the move, when you're outside at a cafe. Across the Nero, you can just get some research, pull that together, annotate it. it this isn't a thing where you have to sit and slog and slave, and that's not necessary. And um, I get, I run uh, a couple of businesses and uh, from my device um, using Google Tools. You will need Google Tools to do this. If you're of the opinion, oh, I've got this, I've got that, I've got that other thing, then this is not going to help you because this is just how to get it done the most efficient way. And these are the tools I suggest with 10 years of experience and being there someone with a degree in computer science. We're just going to use these tools because they are what work. We're not married to any software, cloud storage, or anything like that. We just stick to the tools that work, and right now these are the things that are working, okay? Um, now, the most important thing to know about research is that it comes in different levels and it's worth different things. Um, Peer-reviewed academic journals are by far the most reputable source after that is academic journals and then scientific and technical journals and then um, sort of expert publications, expert books, expert websites and right at the lowest end are just regular websites and at the very bottom, which will get you zero, but kiss, nada, zilp, absolutely niche in terms of marks is your personal opinion if it is not backed up by academic research, okay? So, here's what we do. You will need a Google, uh, a Gmail account, um, not some a Gmail account attached to something else, uh, just a Gmail account. Having said that, if your Gmail account is, has Yahoo on the end and you got it quite a long time ago like I did, that will work. But other than that, if you're starting out new, it has to be just a regular Gmail account. And um, if you don't have one, set one up. It's very quick and easy to do. Uh, just pause the video and set one up. If you have one but you've forgotten the password, just reset it. But it is best if you're going to use your Android device, you have an Android device, a Samsung tablet, something like this, and you want to use it, the best thing to do is to use the Gmail that you actually set up your Android account with that's connected to the Play Store and so on. Otherwise, it just you're just asking for a whole bunch of permissions, troubles that you could just avoid. So... Um, if you have an Android, you would already have a Gmail account set up, so just use that one, okay? So, um, pause if you haven't got Gmail set up. If you have, let's go. You get 15 gigabytes of free storage at the time of recording this, which is March 2019. 15 gigabytes is more than enough for a single assignment, so let's just get on. Okay, excellent. So, 
You go to Google Scholar. The best thing to do with Google Scholar, you always want to be in the desktop site, as you can see there, for whatever you're doing on Android. Um, the best thing to do is to type in actual phrases, not um, search for specific books, because books will get you more things in the, in the line of Google Books. And the issue with that is that Google Books is for paying, not research. And sometimes huge portions of the book are hidden. There are tricks to get around that, and I may do another video on some other time, but this is just about getting your PDF research. Okay, so if we just do feminism in Pride and Prejudice, okay? Lots of things come up. Now, while this says book here, you can also see that it, let me check I'm in a desktop site actually. Yeah, okay. Uh, that it says PDF on the right hand side of the screen. And where it says PDF, we absolutely want that, okay? The PDF takes me here, but let's go back a step because this is very important. If we press the quotation marks, which are the citation, we get the citation. And by reading the citation, we can tell which kind of thing this is. We can see this is a book. If we look at the Harvard, Harvard is what you generally use in academics in this country. And MLA is what you use if you're doing essays, studies of English and English literature. That's the kind that has the numbers and footnotes. And Harvard is the kind that has the surname and the year. Okay. Now, we can see this is a book by looking at this from how it's written, or you learn that as you go along. If you want something that is like a journal, let's try the one underneath and see what we get. Now, we can tell this is a journal if we look carefully. We have the surname, we have the year if we look in the Harvard section, but we also have a title. Then we have, in italics, the name of the journal, which is 19th Century Fiction. Then the issue and volume number, 28 and 3, PP, and the pages. So if it's written like that, that means it came from a journal. We can't tell if that journal is peer-reviewed at this particular stage with this kind of research, but we can tell that it's a journal, not a website, and not a book, okay? If it's a journal, it's worth more. So that's because journals have to be of a certain standard. They can't just be any nonsense that somebody just blogged or wrote about, okay? Right. So when we get that, we copy, uh, we highlight and copy the, um, sorry, I did it with Google, one second. We highlight and copy that straight away. We don't waste time. Okay, so I have that now in my copy. It won't actually do it because I'm recording, but I'll try it one more time because this is the kind of thing. There we go. Okay, right. We copy it, and straight away what we want to do is we want to take it to a document that we have saved in Drive. So you want to go into Drive, make a folder. I've made a folder here called My Assignment, and in that I've got a folder called My Assignment Research where I'll be saving my PDFs. And right now I have a, do a Google Doc app called My Bib, and all I'm going to do is just double-click to open it and save using the paste feature that information there. We don't try to scramble to put bibliographies together. And why are we doing a big in bib instead of referencing? Very important but simple point. Until you've actually written the assignment and you've put the reference in, the in-text citation that is, which is usually the surname and the year in, ha in Harvard, and a number in MLA or M H I, I even forget the letter string that it goes with, and it's a much more complicated form of referencing that one. But the main issue is, until you put it in, it's only things that you actually put into the assignment that uh, should go into the reference list. Up until that point, it is just your bibliography, your wider reading. Now, when you do essays, sometimes they want you to call the reference list the bibliography, and in which case you would only have things that go into the assignment, but that hardly matters at this stage. The stage is when you're just building it, you are just making a bib, and it's afterwards that you'll decide what goes in and what goes out, okay? So you've saved that. Then what you do is you go back to Chrome, and you open up the PDF by right-clicking on it. You open it up in a new tab. Oh, it just completely ignores it. Okay. Because we're on, uh, let me do that again. Because we're on Android, 
it tried to save it straight away, but I wanted it to open it to a new tab and not show it. So I'll tell it to stop. Mm. It's one that it wants to download rather than show me. Let's try another one. Oh, I've got a workaround for this actually. Just do it from here. Okay, good. So just do the open tab if you're on tablet from the article and not the PDF because it will download it straight away. So I go here, I have a look at this. I am able to use this feature here. It's called find in page. This is very important. Using find in page, I'm going to look up a word, in this case, feminism. Okay. I don't even have to look up the whole word. I want to see how many times it's here. Now, it's telling me it's only here three times because all it's basically showing me is a, a sort of... What it's actually showing me is more like the short version of it, the excerpt, and not a lot of stuff. So the whole point of doing this is to make sure that the article is worth something that it actually means something. So let's check our download. So we'll do that again by doing this, okay? We press on it, it will download it. We tell it to download it again, and we open it straight away. When we open it, normally I'd have to click the word open, by the way. When we open it, we can have a look at what it is. So you can see that it's a PDF of a few pages. Sometimes they're longer, sometimes they're shorter. It's downloading it. So we've got 19 pages of research, okay? I now want to search this, so I just use the find feature, I type in feminism, it says it's only there once, two, three times, only three times, four, seven, you can see, okay, it's doing it a little slowly, but you can see that that's there many, many times. If it had only shown up once, for instance, that wouldn't be very good. It, wouldn't th it would mean that the topic that I'm looking for in the research isn't really there. So, what I'll do now is in the places that it shows up, I have a quick scan of it. Century Feminism of Mary. Mm -hmm. And what I would be looking for is context. This is the second stage. I just need to scan it and see if the things that are in here are helpful. Um, we see that it was Jane Austen, but has actually postulated this post-Freudian thesis as the definitive standard by which feminism in Jane Austen should be judged. So it really doesn't matter. As you can see, more are turning up there, three of 16. What we've learned from this test, because this is a test you do through all of it, is that this is a proper academic journal which you could tell from up here. It says where it came from, University of California. Um, it comes from the 19th century fiction, the volume, the year, and so on. Now, we see this came out in 1973. We are going to do this one more time, and I will tell you how to get research that's much, much more modern and up-to-date. You can adjust the year. But we can see that this article is useful. It's got proper referencing at the bottom. Oh, by the way, this is an example of the essay style of referencing here where the number goes in and then the reference is going to the footnote, okay? Uh, which can be seen if I'm highlighting here is what I'm talking about, okay? So, and the one is here. First there. Well, you see what I mean. And it relates to the reference here, okay? So, by looking at this and doing all of this, I'm able to see that this is okay. Now, that means that I'm now at the saving stage. So I will tell it to save it to my Google Drive. And I save it in a certain format so I can find it later, which is the surname of the person who wrote it, the year, and the first three letters of the title, OK? Now, that can easily be found by just looking up here. I see that the person who wrote this was called Brown. This came out in 73. And the story is called Jane Austen and the Feminist Tradition. So I would literally 
save it this way. This is your filing system. I'd literally save it. By remembering I have a memory like a sieve and copying it. <laughs> I use the copy feature and then I use save and then modify because that title will be too long. So I paste it in. So I've got brown. Then I only have to remember one thing, 73. And then I cut this bit. There, just like that, I have it filed properly. I'm going to save it in the right place. Now, if we now go to Drive, it will be uploading it, which sometimes takes a little bit of time. There we go. It's uploading it already. Okay. Now, once it's uploaded it, I can now move on to the next stage of my research, okay? Which is annotations right here in Drive quickly and easily. I will do the same thing here. I'll use the search feature. I'll type in the word feminism. Okay. It will search for it much quicker this time. One of 16. All right. I will tell it to go to a couple that I need. So let's say I pick this one here. And this one is talking about post-Freudian thesis. I can now add a comment right here in Drive and type Freudian comparison, for example, okay? That means that when I come back to this later, because you're going to be building maybe 20, 30 different PDFs, you can't be expected to remember what everything was, what each point is. You're just picking up the important points. By making comments like this, you, s you, you do the study, the research, the finding, you do it all at once. And when you come back to it to add it to your assignment, you know what was about, what was um, when. Uh, what I often do here, or I suggest to people, then you have a little bit more time than I, w than I have in this video, is to actually put more stuff into the comments so you'd actually put the surname the year so the idea is you can actually cut out copy and paste what you've written here and put that into your assignment later on if you already have the idea in your, the, your head at the time so this is about inspiration if you read it and you say to yourself oh that's a perfect point for my assignment you quickly just make up the quote make up the reference make up the paragraph and you have it there or you just use it to to summarize what's there and to help you remember why it was important and what you would like to say. So for instance, you've put in Freudian comparison, used to argue um, scientific psychology, okay? There, my point's made. That is basically how you do it and the last thing to show you which I forgot when I was doing it before is about the year now this is up here in this case year and I can say since 15 since 2018 since 19 I can sort by date so that I tell it to sort it by date I can choose um, advanced search and do some advanced things here but also if I uh, I can tell it any time, but I can pick the, uh, I can more on um, the desktop version, which this is the desktop site of, you can actually pick a, you can actually say like for instance from 2000 to 2019, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm why that option is in here it's perhaps in the advanced section but anyway 
you do it, let me see, return, on, yeah, there we are. Return A to cause dated between, so I could say to show it to me from 2000 to 2019. Really, the future? Dear, oh dear. <laughs> okay. And press go. And then it would only be showing me things between that time period. And as long as I pick something. And you see it comes up quickly. You go through the same procedure for saving it, which is to add it to your drive. You use the surname beer, everything we've just been through. And always remember to use the quotation marks to see when it was made. And you can also check if it's a journal, what journal it came from, and so on. Like, for instance, I and also make sure you can get the PDF of it, as you can see here. Very important. And there's also a little thing down here, related articles to help you find more and cited by, so to, um, that's not highlighting here because, there we go, cited by, shows you how many other people have used it, what they had to say, it can help you find other articles, other things to reference and related articles also helps you. Sometimes there's different versions, so you can see all four versions of the same thing or how many versions there are. So that is basically how you do this kind of thing. There's more to know with actually adding it to your assignment. For instance, you'd um, put in the surname, the year, write your paragraph around it, and that can be in another video. But this is basically how you get your research very, very quickly, okay?